What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be creating a script to automatically take data from a crypto API. Now this project stems from an earlier video that I did where I walked through what an API was and how you can use it. And in that video, I showed you how to use CoinMarketCap's API so you can start pulling in their crypto data. And in this video, we're gonna take it one step further and automate that process. And then we're gonna do a little bit of transformation with the data. And I'm gonna show you some cool stuff on how you can use it. And maybe we'll do a little bit of visualization at the end, but that is not the main point of this video. It's mostly around the automation piece and a little bit of the data cleaning piece as well. Now, fair warning, this is not a beginner's level project. It's probably more like an intermediate project. And it's not even a complete project per se, because we're not doing all the data cleaning. We're not doing all the visualizations. But if you follow along, we're going to cover a lot of different things. And you're really going to set yourself up to be able to do just about anything you want with this data or different APIs that you pull from. So with that being said, let's jump onto my screen and get started with the project. All right, so this is where we stopped in our last video. So if you haven't watched it, now is the time to go back and do that. I'll have a link in the description. Also, all the code that we're gonna be looking at today and working through is going to be in a GitHub repo below. So you can go and get all the code and have it completely finished and just follow along, or you can code it from scratch along with me. I do recommend writing it from scratch if you can, because I think you'll learn more and you'll make mistakes and you'll learn from that as we go through it, but it is up to you. So. Let's get started. And as you can see, uh, we have this script right here and I'm starting basically from scratch. I have a completed one up here. I'm actually gonna get rid of those. Um, and what we're going to do is we're gonna start from exactly where we started in our last one. I'm gonna run the script. Um, this is gonna pull from our API and we're gonna look at the dictionary, set our option and do our JSON normalize. So this is where we literally left off from the, from the last video. So we have all of this data and what we want to do with it is we want to kind of automate that process, right? Cause we don't want to have to come in here, run this and, you know, put into a CSV manually or something like that. We want to automate this data collection process so that we can just have the data ready for us to use um, and it all be ready to go. So we're going to be using this script, um, but you know, we, we might want to add a little bit more to it before we do that. Uh, the first thing that I want to do before, um, before anything is something that I like to do when I'm creating these automation scripts as I, I like to add a timestamp. Uh, and the reason for that is because I want to know when I ran or when each of those, um, loops you can say runs through and, and, and does those automated runs, right? So if I do it every day, I want to know what time of day I ran it, making sure each run ran successfully. Uh, and so all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new column at the end and just call it timestamp. So let's go right up here and we're going to say uh, PD dot, and there's something called to date time. So we're going to do uh, two underscore date time, and then we're going to do now. And what this is literally going to do is take the the date, uh, the, the timestamp of right now when it's running, and it's going to show that. Now, we need to, of course, add a new uh, a new column for that. So all we're going to do is we're going to say um, data frame. Whoops. We're going to say data frame. And let me see real quick. So we just have the data. We need to add, we need to create this data frame right here. So data frame equals, and then this JSON normalized, and we're gonna say data frame, and then we're gonna do a bracket, and we're gonna say timestamp. And we'll do, well, are all these lowercase? We're gonna keep with the, the lowercase, and we're gonna say timestamp. And we'll do that bracket, and we'll say equals. So what this is gonna do is gonna, first off, it's gonna create this data, or, or, or assign this DF as our data frame, and then we're gonna add this timestamp and add this new column. And so let's, run this really quickly and let's go all the way to the right. And this is our timestamp. And this is the time uh, that it is right now. This is the day that I'm running it. This is the time that I'm running it. And so this is working properly. Now, if you look really quickly, there is a last updated in here and this is very close to this timestamp, but it is not the same thing. Um, but if you looked through this data and you really dug into it a little bit, there's this last update is coming from coin market caps API. 
And this is when the actual um, uh, cryptocurrency was updated in their system. And so it is going to be really close, but it's not going to be exact. And so I, I don't like to rely on built-in ones that you know are coming from an API or something. I want to make one myself that's running on the system where I'm creating the automated process, just like just something I do. Um, so now we have this original data frame created, right? We ha we now have what we need, but what we want to do is to keep adding data to this. Um, we don't want it to just go to, um, you know, create these 5,000 rows. We want it to create 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 over time, whether it's a day, an hour, a week, um, whatever you want to run it. So um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to limit this a lot. I just want to look at the top let's say 15. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to run through all this again. So now I just have the top 15. It's going to be um, easier to, to see and it won't take a, as much time to run our scripts. Again, you can keep as many as you'd like. If you want 100, 200, all 5,000, you do whatever you'd like. But what we're now going to do is we're going to create a function using this original script. So we, again, we have this data frame. And we are going to create an automated process that is going to an automate a, a script to automate this that is going to append data to this data frame right here. So that's kind of you know the big thing that we're trying to accomplish in this project. Um, so let's go up here and we're going to we'll just take from here all the way to here. We're just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it down here. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a function. So we're going to say DEF, and we're going to call this the API underscore runner, because it's going to run our API um, whenever we need it to run. Now, when you are formatting um, something for a function, it, it, it needs to be formatted properly. And so what we need to do is we need to go over here. I'm going to hit tab. We're going to do this all the way down. I'm just going to skip forward when it's all the way done. All right, so now we have this URL. And what we want to add, because this is, again, this is going to run through kind of this, this automated process. We're going to run this, um, this function there. What we want is to also add this right here. So we need to take this, and we're going to need to add this. We'll just put it down here. OK. Yeah, let's do that. So what we have so far is really close to what we want our function to be. Um, we have this function that we're going to be running through. It's going to call this function. It's going to call the, the API. We're going to use our key. We are going to um, you know test it, load it, format it, and, and format it right here. Then we're going to add this timestamp, and then we will have this. Now, right now, it's just call, it, it's just going to print this data frame basically. But that's not what we want right now. What we want is to actually append this data. So when it gets to here, when it gets to this data, that's going to be right, um, right here. What we want to do now, since we already have the original data frame set up up top, is we now want to say that this is going to be data frame two. And we're going to say, it's going to append it to data frame two. And so the original data frame, we're going to say data frame two dot append. And we're going to say df2. All this does is this says this new data that's going to be coming in every time. Let's say it's a loop and it's just looping through, pulling the data, pulling the data, pulling the data. We're going to create this data frame. We're going to add add this timestamp like, like we want. And then we're going to append that to this original data frame. So as of right now, this looks good. I will we'll run it in a second. Well, I'll create it. So I just created it. <clears throat> so now we need to actually create our script to automatically run this. So we're going to do something called import OS. And let me tell you, there's a thousand different ways to do this. And there are better ways to do this, but they're much more complex, much co more complicated, and some cost money um, in order to do it. I'm going to show you different options on how to do this in future videos on how to automate your Python scripts. But this one to me is one I've used a lot, um, many, many times for different projects, and it works. So I'm not going to show you the most complicated thing in the world. I'm going to show you something that I've just used a lot. And so we're going to say from time, import time, from time, import sleep. That one's important. And now we're going to create our loop. 
So what these, um, what the time and the sleep and the OS uh, or your operating system, what, what these are going to do is they're going to give us the ability to track the time and we're going to be able to run through and call this function in certain intervals that we want. So let's create our for loop. We're going to say for i in. Now you can create this specific part in different ways. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say range of one, uh, let's say 333. And I say 333. And if you remember from the first video on the API, you only have 333 runs per day. And so if I ran, ran this 333 times today, that would be our max. And so that's why I'm using that 333 just for reference. So now we're going to do API underscore runner. So in this loop, we're going to call this function up here. And then I'm going to say, I want to prove or, or show, have an output to show that this is running through successfully. So I'm just going to, and you can write anything here. We're just going to say API runner completed, uh, completed successfully. Successfully. How do you spell that? Successfully. That doesn't look right. I'm just going to say completed. All right, forget that. I don't remember how to say uh, uh, spell successfully. If that's if it spelled it right, you guys spell it that way, but I can't remember. Now we're going to use this sleep right here. Now this counts it in seconds. You can change it to minutes, hours, whatever. We're going to have it run every minute, which is every 60 seconds. And so this is going to, I'm just going to say it's going to sleep for one minute. And then we're going to say exit. So all of this is going to do, and this is, again, fairly simple. It's just a simple for loop. And what it says is it's going to call this API. It's going to tell us that it ran successfully. And then it's going to wait for 60 seconds, and it's going to run again. That's it. So let's run this and see what happens. See if what we did works. So it ran the first time. Now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to bore you because I'm doing this live. Exactly what we're about to get is what we're going to use. I didn't run it overnight or, or for a week so that we have a bunch of data. And what you were going to work with, I'm going to work with as well. So I'm going to wait a few minutes. I'm going to let this run. I want you to do the same thing. I'm going to let this run for maybe like five minutes or so. And we'll work with what we have. And we'll keep going with the project because, again, we're not... The point of this project is not to create the final product or creating all the visualizations that um, will most likely be in another video where we're taking all this data and doing all these things with it. The point of this video is to automate it, clean it up to where we have it to where we can really use it. And then I'm going to let you guys loose and you guys can do whatever you want with it. And I think it's really setting you up for a lot of successful projects in the future that you can do all by yourself without me having to walk you through it. So as you can see, it's already ran through twice. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to let that run through uh, just a few more times, and then we will continue with the project. All right, we are back. And of course, it's only ran what five times. Um, it has not reached the limit of 333, so we are perfectly fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop this by clicking this uh, square up here, and it's going to give us some error. Uh, and then we're going to check it, and we will see what we have. I don't know why it's taking so long, if I'm being honest. All right, so I interrupted it. And let's run this. Let's see what we got. I hope we have more than 15, because if not, I'm going to be very upset. Okay. So, okay. Well, <laughs> uh, I made a mistake. Um, I was supposed to put data frame right here. And I had data frame too. So, um, <laughs> take change your script. Do not do what I just did. We're supposed to be append. It's supposed to be data frame append. And we're supposed to be appending the original data, uh, this data frame two to the original data frame. So um, <laughs> I messed up on that one. Let's rerun that. Let's rerun that. Um, let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Local variable DF reference before assignment. Okay. This is perfect because this happened to me before. Um, we're running into all sorts of good stuff. I like to keep this stuff in my videos. I laugh because I hate running into mistakes. But everybody says they, they are happy that I do this. Um, so I'm going to keep doing it. I'm not going to cut this out, I promise. Um, but what we actually need to do is we need to go back up to this function. 
because what happened was is we called this data frame uh, and now it's it's because it's in a function it's in what we they would call a local variable what we need to do is we now need to state that this is a global um it's just called a global that's all it is um and so what we're going to do is we're going to do tab we're going to say global we're going to say df and what this should do is this should declare it as a global variable and it should let this run properly let's hope it does all right it's running <laughs> um again i run into mistakes uh, it, let me tell you something while, while we're here for just a second this project i ran into probably a hundred mistakes uh, or a hundred errors issues that i had to research for hours um, and hours i'm legitimately on stack overflow and just googling and figuring figuring these things out there were a lot of new things that I had never run into before um, just on this project. And so um, everything that you're seeing is from after I went through all of those things uh, or after I fixed all of those things and had to really work through them. It was, it was very, um, it was frustrating at times. I just, I couldn't figure it out. And so what you're looking at is kind of the polished version of that now that I have everything laid out because I, I can't spend 10 hours on a project. Nobody would watch it. So just know that if you are, are running into some of these mistakes or you run into mistakes later on when you're expanding this project, that's completely normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this run for a little bit. And then uh, after maybe three or four minutes, we'll come back and we'll keep going with the project. All right. So let's run this and check and see if we have uh, the data that we're looking for. Uh, and it looks like we do. Let's go actually back up here really quick. Um, uh, we want to set this to display max rows because I want to be able to see all the rows and not just um, a few of them. So, and that just instead of it gives us this scrolling instead of that dot 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 that shows us just a few. So there's our original 15, and then we have the next um, the next loop, and then we have the next loop. And let me scroll over to the timestamps and I'll show you what I mean. Um, so this was ran on 526, 1501. Let's go down 526 at 2905. And then the next one you can see was ran at 3006, 31. These are all the ones one minute after each other. My original one was from earlier. 32, 33, yeah. So you can see 32, 31, 30, 30, or um, 30, 29. And this one was about 15 minutes ago when I first um, ran the original data frame, right? All right, guys, this is Alex from the future. I've actually completed this entire project uh, in the video, and you're about to see all of that after this. But I wanted to show you one more thing that you can do in this function up here that I didn't show you uh, originally that I'm coming back to show you, and that's how to actually put it into a CSV. Now, all we've done in this one is we, we've kept it all enclosed in a data frame and that's it. And that may be great, but a lot of you guys are gonna want to automate this and put it into a CSV. And I wanna show you how to do that. All right, so what I'm gonna show you really quickly is right here in this, uh, in this folder right here, I have all these different API threes and fours. These were tests that I did before. But what you can do is instead of just putting it into a data frame, you can actually append the data to a CSV and have that CSV sitting out there for you instead of just keeping it all in the data frame. And there's a lot of different uses for that. You may want to have that file separately from here just in case something times out or something breaks, which is a legitimate concern or your computer shuts off or, or something like that. That is a legitimate concern. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, if not, and this is basically uh, an if statement, we're gonna say os dot path dot is file. So what this is gonna do is check if there's already a file under this name. And we're gonna do r dot or, or r. Um, if you have never done um, if you've never done CSV stuff before, uh, it's really important that you put that. You'll, you're gonna get an error every time. So we're gonna take this right here, and we're gonna copy that. And we're going to put that right here. And then we're also going to do a slash. And then we're going to name it, basically. Um, let's name this API because I don't think I have that one in there. I think I deleted it. Yeah, so I don't have API. So I'm just going to keep it API.csv. 
and then I'm going to close that parentheses and then we're going to add a colon right here and we're going to say if that does not exist we are going to write this to it and create it so we're going to say data frames that's this data frame right here data frame dot I'm going to say two underscore CSV and we're going to do that R and then we're going to copy this so oops, let's just let's just replace it like that and then we're going to say comma header oops, header is equal to column underscore names so what this is going to do is if we run through this and what we would have to do is um i'll talk about this in a little bit we'll have to change this up a little bit but what this is going to do is going to check to see if this file right here exists if it does not it is going to create it and create the column headers based off the this data frame that is what that does now what we want to do is say else and this next part that we're going to write is saying if there's already the api file there we want to append the data we don't want to overwrite it or anything like that we want to append the data so we're going to say we're basically going to copy this maybe not the whole thing but i already did it um so we're going to copy that and we're going to say mode oops mode equals a and a stands for append and then we're going to say header oops keep messing up header and we're going to say false oops <laughs> We're going to say false, which means when it depends on the data, it's not going to use those col the column headers every time, which you don't want because every time you append it, if you added the headers, every 15 rows, every 15 rows, you're going to have another headers that you're going to have to like go out into that CSV and filter out and, and get rid of them. So we're going to say header equals false. Now, just a second ago, I said you would need to mess with this just a little bit, and you would because every time... Um, you'd be putting in this data frame which it's already appending it to this data frame so every time you'd be creating a lot of duplicates if you kept it exactly as is what you were going to need to do is basically take it back to its to its um, bones um, so you need to kind of keep it like this so what you need to do is just now run this and it would work perfectly uh, let's test it really quick um, to see if it works uh, because I'm I'm promising you something I want to make sure it actually works let's run it this time okay so it just ran for the first time so it should have created this file let's go see if that works properly so now it just created that file and now we're going to see if it actually appends the data so let's wait just one time um, and then I'm gonna stop it I'm gonna see if it works again I'm just verifying to make sure that what I'm telling you is actually working uh, because if it doesn't, I would feel terrible. Uh, we don't want that. And while that's running, actually, I'm going to add this because now I want to show you how to call it. Um, super easy. We're just going to do PD dot read underscore CSV. We're going to do that. We're going to call this just like that. And then we're going to say data frame and we're just going to do 72 something random because i've already done this whole project i don't want to mess anything up <clears throat> so we're going to say data frame 72. so now let's stop this um and what we're going to do is once that stops we're going to run this and see if it actually um worked and let's see make sure that this actually pulled the data in all right so we interrupted it the file is ready to be read in so let's read it in there's our file um let's see what did i mess up or did i mess anything up ah i didn't mess anything up this is the index for this file and we already had this in here we'd probably be able to get rid of it but if you see we have zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen then we have zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and if we look at the timestamp, it should be one minute apart so it's one nineteen forty five it said 1 20, 45. So this worked exactly as planned. Um, again, you have two different options. You can just keep it how it was before. And I'll leave both of those options, you know, in the in the script so that you can kind of choose which one you want. But um, that's how you do that. So then 
right here, you're appending it to a CSV file. And then if you just keep this and you get rid of all this, you're just appending it to a data frame. Now, please continue with the rest of the video that I already have done. Um, but again, I'm future Alex. So uh, please continue with the rest of the video. Okay, so we have all this data. We have, we have so many columns we can do now. You know, if you want to completely just go and do your own thing, you absolutely can do that. I'm going to mess around with a few things, um, kind of show you something that I did that I thought was really interesting um, in order to visualize this data a little bit and transform it a little bit to make it more usable. Um, but we're not doing a full data cleaning. That's not what this project is. We're not doing a full data cleaning of this data. That would be a, a very large undertaking because honestly, this needs a lot of work. One thing that I do want to clean up really quick uh, is is this right here. I, this the, the math will be fine. It's just the way that it's shown on here is in uh, the scientific notation, and I don't like it. So what I'm going to do really quickly is, is just um, get rid of that. So we're going to uh, we're going to say pd dot set and we'll do underscore option, and this is going to be do a parentheses, I'm gonna say display. This is just this how this is formatted. So we're gonna display uh, dot float underscore format. And we're gonna say comma. And we're now we're gonna use this lambda. I'm gonna say x colon. And we're gonna say percent 0.5 f. And that right there. And we're going to say percent x. Now, if you don't know what lambdas, is, lambdas are, um, I highly recommend looking those up. Um, again, this is not a beginner tutorial. Whoops. No such keys, display fl floor format. That makes sense. Uh, this is float. Yeah, guys, this is not a beginner's level, all right? Uh, you can't use the floor format. This is the float format. All right, so now let's take a look at this, uh, this DF. Uh, this data frame that we have. So we're just going to hit DF, click enter. And now our numbers are a little bit more easily readable. I prefer it this way. You do not have to do this. I'm doing this just because this is what I prefer. So let's jump right into it. Um, something that when I saw this data, I was like something that I really thought was interesting is this percent change of one hour, percent change 24 hours, seven days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. If you're not in crypto or you don't do investing or anything like that, what this is going to show us is how, I mean, it's pretty obvious, how much the price of this coin has changed over the last hour, 24 hours, seven days. So as you can see, it's it's barely fluctuated after, over the past 24 hours, a little bit over the past um, seven days, a lot over the last 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days, 20, minus 26%, minus 33%. We're in May, we just had a kind of a crash in crypto uh, a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, this tracks, right? But I want to visualize this, see this, and, and kind of see, um, you know, how this is going to look and how I, if I can gain any insight from that information and just having it all displayed for me. But in its current state, um, you know, we really cannot do that. Um, now, another issue, not an issue, but another thing that we have to take into consideration is we have Bitcoin net right here. We have Bitcoin right here after different pulls. Now, we just did it a minute after each other, but for your project, you may do it a, a, a run each day, a run every hour or something like that, right? And if you did that, your data could be very different. And so... You may just want to take this first one, but what I'm going to do for the sake of this project, I'm going to group them. So let's go down here and we're going to say uh, df dot group by. And so if you've ever done something like SQL, uh, this is how you group by in pandas, basically. We're going to group by uh, the name. So, so on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether. So we're going to, we're going to do that on name. And... Uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to say sort is equal to false. Oops. I'm not going to sort it. Uh, you could say true there, but no, we're not going to. And I guess you'll see why later. We're going to do an open bracket. 
And now we need to choose what we're going to group by uh, or what we're gonna, what columns we're gonna have. So I'm gonna do another open bracket and I'm just gonna copy and paste these. So I'm gonna start right here at quote percent one hour. So I'm gonna do boom and then go over one and we're gonna take 24 hours. Paste that comma. Then we have the seven day, 30 day. And we're gonna do like that. And I'm just gonna do comma. I'm gonna do the same one, but I'm just gonna manually change it to 30 day. Get rid of that at the end. I don't know what that is. Uh, and then we're gonna do 60 days and comma. And we're gonna do our last one, which is 90 days. And let's see what that gives us. Ah, it doesn't give us anything. Okay, I know what's wrong here. Um, we forgot to add basically the what we're we have we're grouping by something. We need to have like an average, uh, a mean, uh, a mode, or something like that, right? So all we have to do is go to the end right here, and let's just do the mean. We're gonna do an average, um, and, and so we're taking this number. So let, let's say this is for Bitcoin. So we're gonna take this number in this one hour for every time it's Bitcoin, it's gonna group them all together um, and then it's going to average them. So in the past five minutes where it's been running, we're gonna take the average or the mean of that. So let's run this again. And so now this is our output. Let's take a look. Oops, I meant down here. Let's run this now. Now what we have is all of these um, cryptos. These are all 15 that we have, and this is the average um, for this one hour, 24, seven days, 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. So now we have all of our cryptocurrencies over here. We have our percent changes up top and then our averages um, here as well. And so now what we're going to do is, you know, if you try to visualize this as is, it doesn't really work because these percent changes are up here as columns and we don't really want them as columns because that it just doesn't work for visual for actually creating the visualizations. We really need these to be rows. And so my initial thought when I was doing this was I, of course, I need to pivot. Um, you know, if you've ever used uh, pivot like in Excel or, or Power BI or something like that, that was my first thought. And I tried everything and I could not, could not get it to work. And I almost gave up until I, I ran across um, something called stacking or a stack. And, and so this was not something that I, I, I think I have used it before, but I, I couldn't remember to be, if I'm being completely frank, I couldn't remember how to do this. So I just did, um, once I saw what it was, I did stack and let's make that day 24. You don't have to do this. Uh, you can keep this all the original data frame. I'm just, I like for visual purposes, you can see like the progression that we're making. Um, but I like to, you know, create its new data frame and I can always go back and look at this data frame three um, as we go, but you don't, you don't have to do that. That's just what I'm doing. So now let's take a look at this. Now uh, up here we had Bitcoin and we had all these columns and we had uh, these numbers as rows, but now we have all of these as rows as well. This, how we have this is much, much more usable. Um, and if you've ever done something like um, pivot or the stacking before, you'll know that you, you kind of have to do it if you really want to, to visualize this well. But um, you because we just stacked it, it kind of changed it. So if we look at, um, let's look at the type of, let's do type of data frame three. This is before, um, before we stacked it, this was in a data frame. But now let's go look at data frame four. So this is a series, this is no longer a data frame. And so we have to remember that that's, uh, that's really important because we can no longer treat it as a data frame, it's now a series. So we wanna get it back to a data frame. We don't want it to be like that because you can't really use it in the series. So what we're gonna do, and let me just create a few of these so you can be up here better. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, data frame four dot, and it's something called two underscore frame. So we're gonna make this into uh, a frame. And now we're gonna specify the name. And it doesn't mean um, the name like right here. 
we actually mean the name of these values right here. This is part of the stacking process in, in these columns, or these two columns. So let's go right here, and we're gonna call it, um, let's just say values. And let's make this data frame five. And let's see the output, whoops, for data frame five. And now, so there's that values. And now this already looks a lot better, right? So it's in this, it's in this more, um, this is already a data frame. So this is a data frame. So let's look at type, um, data frame five. So now it's in a data frame, but the issue is, is that this name is kind of acting like a, an index, which we don't want because we want to be able to use this. So it doesn't really have an index at the moment. So we need to give it an index. But typically when you give an index, you'll do something like, um, we'll say data frame dot five, we'll do set underscore index, and then you'll do something like um, name. Uh, so let's just do data frame six is equal to, we'll see, we'll see what happens here. It's gonna give us an error. Oops, what I meant is we're gonna do data frame five, bracket, uh, name. And that's a column, right? We're gonna do that. And it's basically gonna say that that's not gonna work. And what we need to do is what, or at least what I want to do and what we're going to do in this video is I'm gonna create numbers. I really would just want it to be numbered one, two, three, four, five. That's what I want. Um, but we don't have that right now. I can't just will it into existence. So now what we're gonna do is kind of create uh, an index basically out of thin air. So we're gonna do pd.index and we're gonna say, uh, you know, we basically want how many um, rows are in here. Because that's what we want our, our um, index to be. We want it to count how many are in here. Now you can make this dynamic and I, it probably wouldn't be that hard, but I'm gonna take this super lazy route um, and I'm just gonna say, uh, let's do df.5 or oops, df5.count. And there's 90 values in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a range of 90. Uh, and this is not, uh, I would definitely make this dynamic, but I'm, again, I'm just being, uh, being a little bit lazy. I'm going to call this index is equal to, and I'm going to put this index right here. So now this is a number. So now it's going to literally index this for us. Now, I ran into this issue many times. Um, so what I need to actually do is to reset this index and then do it properly the first time. Uh, so let's do re, let's get rid of this. Let's reset this index um, and it actually fixed itself. Um, so what was happening was, is we were indexing something that was already indexed and we were causing issues in a nutshell. So we reset the index and now this is what it looks like. And this is exactly what we want. This is really how we wanted it formatted in order to, for our visualizations. We have um, multiple rows for the Bitcoin. Um, each of these columns are, is now a row with the value attached to it. Exactly what we wanted. So um, really quick, I for whatever reason, it, it makes that uh, level one. I don't know why, but we're just gonna rename that column really quickly. So we're going to do data frame six dot rename. And then we're going to do an open parenthesis. We're going to say columns equal to, and we're going to do one of these bad boys. Oops. One of these bad boys, this, this type of bracket. And we're going to say level underscore one. And we'll do a colon and then, oops. And then a colon. And then what we want to change it to, and I'm just going to call this the percent underscore change. So let's call this data frame seven. Again, you don't have to do that. I'm just doing it. So now this looks much, much better. Now let's try to visualize this one um, because we haven't done any visualizations yet. We've just been messing with the data a little bit. I, I, you know, I kind of want to see how we can use this. This is something that I personally am interested in. So um, I kind of wanted to see visualize how these changed over these, these time periods. Uh, but we need to um, import some stuff in order to be able to visualize this. So we're going to import Seaborn as SNS. And if we need to, 
Um, we're going to import matplotlib as well. I don't know if we'll use it right now or at all, but um, we're going to we're going to add it in here either way. So now those are added. And so what we're going to do is come right here. We're going to do sns.catplot. And we're going to, oops, we're going to say the x axis is equal to, and we want to do this as the percent change, percent underscore change. And then we have the y axis. Now we want the y axis to be these values right here. I'm going to say, comma, y is equal to, and then we're going to say values. Oops. And then we're going to say comma, and we'll say we want to basically create a legend, um, I guess you could call it. So we're going to say hue is equal to name. Um, I'll show you what it looks like without it, and then you know you can see that, that we need that. And we're going to say the data is equal to this data frame 7. Data frame 7. And then we are going to say the kind is equal to kind. Now let's run this and see what we get. And super quickly with just, you know, limited um, inputs, here's what we have. Now this looks really good. We can narrow this down if we wanted to, to a few less, because there's a lot here, or, and there's a lot of colors. <clears throat> but again, that's just because we have a lot of different stuff. But there's a few that are doing really well. I think this is Tron. Um, and then we have a few that are not doing so well. But it's really hard to see. If you look down here, it's really hard to see this. Um, and that's just because of the, the column names. And so I actually want to change these column names or these values so that when we visualize it right down here, it, it doesn't look like that. I kind of want this to be, you know, at least one good visualization you can take out of here. Now, this is definitely not perfect or complete by any means, but you know, you can take take that away from here. Um, so let's. Um, I did Alt Enter, which adds another row. I could have just pushed plus. I, that's kind of a lazy way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these um, these values in here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do data frame seven, and we only want to look at this one column. So we'll do that right there, and we want to say dot replace, and we're going to open uh, uh, parentheses and then a bracket. Now, what we need to do is I'm just to show you. Um, one of them is I'm going to say this one hour, do that, oops. And then what I need to do is a comma, another bracket, and this is what it's going to change to. I'm just going to say one hour, oops, one hour. Um, and we'll do this one really quick, and then I'm going to, I don't want you to have to watch me type all this out, but I'm going to go through and basically do all of this uh, for those. But let's, let's see this really quick. And so now, as you can see, that um, the originally it said quote.usd.% change one hour is now only one hour. Now, <clears throat> this didn't actually do anything. We need to apply it to this right here. So I'm going to say data frame seven is equal to, and then we'll run data frame seven again. So now that has actually changed that value. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to update that for every single one. All right, so I basically just put the other ones um, in here that we wanted to change with commas afterneath. So I have 24 hours comma with the seven days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and then this bracket over here, which tells uh, it what to change it to, 24, seven days, 30 days, six days, 90 days. So let's run this. I haven't even tried it yet. Uh, and it looks like it obviously worked properly. So now let's go back down here and let's run this again. And look at that. It looks so much cleaner, so much nicer. Um, and as you, I mean, all of them with that one hour change has very little change. And then you can look back. So we can see back within 90 days, it's gone. A lot of these have gone down, which again, if you're following crypto, you know, there's a big crash recently, um, especially with, with you know, all these altcoins um, that you're seeing right here, went down a ton. So I think this is... Um, Avalanche or die or whatever these ones are, you know, went down dramatically. 
Whereas there's one up here, this lone wolf, um, that's just that's just did, doing really well for whatever reason. So it's really interesting um, to see. Now, this is a pretty specific um, visualization that I personally wanted to see and I thought was interesting. You can do absolutely whatever you want to do with this data. I mean, there's so much here. You can do a lot. I mean, a lot with this data, especially depending on how long you track it, right? I only did this over the course of like five minutes, but if you set this up um, and you can track it over a longer time. Now, um, let's say you wanted to do something much simpler. Uh, you just want to look at like Bitcoin over that time that you, you know, uh, uh, took the data in. That's going to be a lot simpler than what we just did. And I'll show you how to do that really quickly. So we're going to look at the data frame and we are going to say, uh, or we're going to take specific columns. We just want um, a few columns that we want to keep or, or pull from. So we're going to take, uh, oops, we're going to take the name column. We're going to do, uh, well, might be easier if I copy them, but I'm just going to write them out. Quote dot USD dot price this is the price of the actual cryptocurrency. Then we're going to do um, timestamp. And let's make this data frame and we're just going to do 10 for absolutely no reason. Uh, maybe I should have made it nine. It would have been easier. So now we just have these um, these columns. And, you know, we have all of these separate columns. So what we can do, and uh, the re kind of the reason I want to show you this, is you can just query this really quickly and just take the columns that you want. So let's say we just wanted to look at Bitcoin. So we're going to say uh, data frame 10 dot query, do open parentheses, and we're going to say name is equal and Equal is not like that uh, when you're doing it like this. You need to say equal, equal, equal to, and it's a bit, oops, ignore that, uh, is equal to Bitcoin. And we're going to do it just like that. And we're going to say data frame 10 is equal to, let's try running that. Uh, I think something's wrong with it. Let's try it like this. Oops. All right, let's try that. There we go. It was just the, I needed a double quotation instead of a single quotation. That was the issue. So now we have Bitcoin, we have the price, and we have these timestamps. So this is the actual time when we ran it. So this is the original data frame. And then in the, you know, this, this project, it took me 15 more minutes to get this one. And then we had it running properly for the next five minutes. So that's, you know, that's actually what we have. Now, if we want to just visualize this really simply, what we can do is we're going to say... Uh, we're going to do SNS dot line plot. So that's going to be like a little line chart or line graph, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to say X is equal to, and we'll say quote. No, actually, we want the timestamp to be on the X axis. Um, and then we'll do Y is equal to quote dot USD dot and let's see if that works. Could not interpret timestamp for the parameter. Ah, that's because it's not understanding that the data equals data frame 10. Now let's try this. All right, so this is uh, looks terrible. Let me, let me just say sns.set underscore theme and then open parentheses we'll do style is equal to dark red this looks a little better now again we are looking just at a very very short time series but we can look at just bitcoin or we can look at multiple and we're showing this, you know, this line that's showing us this trajectory over time. So you can get really creative with this. You can run this for a long time. You can show Bitcoin over days, weeks, or months, however long you run this. And so that's really all I've got. Um, honestly, like I said, this is not a, I wouldn't say this is a complete full project, but I'm showing you how to do something to enable you to kind of run with it and run with the ball and do basically whatever you want with this. You can pull it from, uh, you know, data from a different API, you can use this exact API and data. But 
I wanted to show you just a few things that I initially saw that I might do with the data. And you have so much, let me go back to this original data frame. Uh, right, we'll use this one right here. This one right here. Look at all this data. I mean, you have so, so, so much data. Actually, let's go to this one, this one's better. You have so much data, so many numbers here, um, so many columns that we didn't even look at that you can use. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot that you can use here. And I'm really trying to just set you up so that you can run with it and do whatever you want. I could have done a thousand different things here, but you know, I tried to just show you two things that you can do with the data that I thought were pretty interesting or, or simple to do. And you know, I want you guys to go out and do something way, way better than what I did. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this showed you how to automate that process so you don't have to sit there and click it and append it and do all these different things that it can show you how to kind of automate this process. And hopefully that will be helpful in your future projects. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, you guys are fantastic. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below. I'll see you in the next video.